Well, thank you for joining us on location today. We have a very special guest with us today. Uh, Lance Corporal uh, Nicholas Turner is uh, a Marine uh, who is uh, actually between assignments now, and he stopped by to talk with us today. Nicholas, thank you very much thanks, for joining thanks us very today. Much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I know that uh, your grandparents uh, live here in Douglasville. Tell me a little bit about your grandparents. Well, um, see, we just grown. I've just grown up in uh, Paulding County, and uh, I always come around and uh, visit my grandparents and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, she decided, uh, since I was home on leave and I was going to miss uh, Christmas, she decided they decided to have a uh, Christmas for me after Halloween. So that's how this came about to me coming to see her. This. Well, we appreciate that, and uh, it's. Uh, Walt and Brenda Smith. Uh, actually, Miss Smith is in the studio with us today, and I know they are very, very proud of you. Yes, Miss Mayor. How did you select the Marine, Marine Corps? What, uh, what well, made you decide to go in the Marines as opposed to the Air Force, Navy, on and on? Well, I've always wanted to be in the military since I was young. I'd grown up just out in the woods and stuff, and I, I just I was actually deciding on between the Army and the Marine Corps, and I wound up choosing the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm because it just it looked the best to me and I thought they were the toughest ones, so that's how I came about picking them. Well, there's no doubt about that. As a matter of fact, our uh, police chief, uh, Chris Womack, is a, uh, is a Marine, and he would, uh, he would agree with you thoroughly. Uh, and, and I understand you uh, uh, participated in ROTC when you were in high school, I, and did that have anything to do with uh, the military and what branch that you it, chose? Yes, sir. Um, I did a... Uh, RTC, junior RTC, uh, it was Army RTC. For uh, four years I did the Raider team, which is, I'd say, the uh, more active side of the ROTC program mm -hmm. we had. It was at uh, Paulton County High School. It ran by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Baker and uh, Sergeant Major Joe T. Hill. And um, they, they helped influence on, you know, just me wanting to join the military too, but uh, uh, also it just kind of helped me see more of the military, what, what it'd be like and stuff, because we got to do all kinds of trips and activities like go to military bases like we've got mm -hmm. to go to Fort Benning and just work with a lot of different military personnel and a lot of things we do. And I understand you're uh, between assignments now. You just uh, got back from Iraq, is that right? I and got get back in March. And uh, you're being deployed to Afghanistan, I understand. Yes, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you did when you were uh, in Iraq uh, and I understand you may have changed your uh, job now. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was uh, last year. Um, you know, I was just I was in the team. I was a saw gunner, and uh, I'm, I'm infantry. So we just walk around patrol, either just you know have our missions we go out and do, and we just go out and just you know look for IDs or try to find any caches and help the local people. Just try to help them build back up mm -hmm. their country and help them get everything back going, get everything started for them. I see. How long were you in uh, Iraq? Uh, seven months. Seven months, and uh, now your new assignment in Afghanistan. Uh, I understand you have a partner that's going with you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Uh, her name is uh, Kayla. She's a yellow lab, and uh, she's about two two years old. She's two little over two, and um, there. This is um, a new thing they started with the infantry. Is they're IDD dogs, mm -hmm. um, IED detector dogs, and they're bomb sniffing dogs, and um, they we. Um, we got got them. There's a 14 for our battalion, and there's two yellow, one chocolate, and the rest are black labs. And it's just a mixture of male and females. Mm -hmm. And um, it's there. It's infantry trained Marines that get the dogs. We go to a school. The school that I went to was in Virginia. It was a mm -hmm. five week long school, and uh, we came back with the dogs. And we uh, also implemented them in other training we did, like before we deployed. Like that's training we do at 29 Palms and stuff. Oh, just cool. help use them with our. And another thing about that too is um, it's you know it's the guys in our battalion that we work with too, so it's people that you've worked with before, mm -hmm. and it just pretty much. So. I see. Well, how will how will you use the dog uh, uh, once you're deployed? Once both of you are deployed there, what uh, uh, what kind of things are you going to be doing? Are you going to be looking for the roadside bombs or? Clearing houses or buildings or what? What happens? All that. Uh, they will will help use them for uh, clearing roads, bridges, and stuff. Even cars. We can have them search cars, uh, even parking lots and stuff like that. Like to say we run into a, a big group of cars, mm -hmm. and we have may worry about one being a ID or a V bid, and then we can also use them to search inside the buildings and stuff. Look for booby traps in there because sure. the different explosive odors they can smell. 
Mm -hmm. Now, is this something new that the uh, military has uh, started, uh, or have they been doing this for a while? It's, I'm, I'm not sure exactly when they started this, but uh, this is new to our battalion. Uh, our sister battalion, 2-3, they, they um, I think they're, they, they've been using them. They just use them this time on this first deployment when they went to Afghanistan. And now this is the first time our battalion is using them for when we go over there. Excellent. Now, did you uh, volunteer? You, you just came off of an assignment in Iraq. Um, and I don't know, is it unusual to be deployed back to an area that's just as bad? Uh, did you uh, volunteer? Or they that, for, the, for the dog, um, uh, it was kind of a both kind of like they uh, picked me to do it because they, they were just looking for because I was at the time uh, I was a team leader mm -hmm. and then they just needed a good reliable pick guys that they can depend on that can they could choose for that and they awesome. picked me for that to do that and I, I love it of course. Well I want you to know that we all of us are very proud of what you do. We uh, fortunately we can be here today uh, we can film this program today mm -hmm. because of what you're doing and uh, your fellow uh, mili folks that are in the military uh, and we don't realize how precious uh, the freedoms that we have and they come at a, a really high price for a lot of folks and uh, we appreciate everything that you and everyone that's with you there does each and every day. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you're doing to get ready. You're, you're actually here for only a few more days uh, as I understand it. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, um, pretty much, I'll just uh, I'll go back to my duty station and then uh, we'll leave out from there. Mm -hmm. Just make sure I have all my stuff ready to go because I'm pretty much pretty much set now. I'm ready because we've finished all our tra training evolutions and stuff before we deploy. So mm -hmm. we we'll just send us home on leave and just relax a little bit and then get ready, hit the ground running. Okay, so where where are you actually assigned now? What's your duty? I'm stationed station? in uh, Hawaii. Okay, and so you. You're going to fly to Hawaii, and then you're going to be deployed to Afghanistan yes, from sir. there. Now, how long will you be there? Seven months. Seven months. So, so the rotation is seven months, and then you're back in seven months again. Well, I know that uh, actually the uh, uh, my neighbor who lives right behind me uh, is uh, in the Army. He's in the uh, National Guard, mm -hmm. and of course he's been deployed on two occasions and believes that he's going to be deployed even again. Are they uh, still relying on, are you relying on the Army and the Marines still relying on our National Guard? Um, not, they're, they're, they have, uh, I've, known, I've seen the news some where they have been calling for more troops, but mm -hmm. uh, I think for the most part that everything's starting to get straightened out now over there, so. Well, that's good. We, we, we pretty much, you know, try to rely on each other, but it's just, you know, everybody mm -hmm. cooperates with each other and try to, you know, help, help each other out. Okay. Well, uh, as, we, as we talked, you've gone through uh, quite a bit of training. Could you tell our audience a little bit about your training at uh, Paris Island and how that is leading up to your deployment? Well, it started off, uh, I went to a boot camp at Paris Island, and that pretty much, it just trained you your basic knowledge on how to be a Marine. And then once you graduate from Paris Island, you'll go on to another school when your MOS, whatever mm -hmm. your job is. Right. For me, it was at Camp Geiger. It was SL School of Infantry, and they taught you how everything a Marine infantry Marine needs to know how to do. And then once you get to your unit, you start to do your workup for your deployment. And then in, in that process, you do different evolutions that you have to do. And uh, leading up to the last evolution that uh, you'll have, which would be at uh, 29 Palms, Mojave Viper in California. And then that's pretty much the end state of your training. And then every, every Marine Corps unit goes through that before they deploy. And it's, okay. it's kind of, you get graded and judged on how you do on all your maneuvers and your everything that you do there. Well, I'm sure it's changed a lot since I was in the military. It was only eight weeks uh, I was in the Air Force. And, and I know that our training was nothing like what uh, the Marines have to go through, but I can tell you that was the longest eight weeks of my life. <laughs> it was 13 weeks for me, Mr. Mayor. 13 weeks. Yeah. I'm not sure yes, I could have made it 13 <laughs> weeks. <laughs> but uh, they do teach you a lot. And, uh, you know, uh, we are so impressed uh, with what you and your fellow Marines do for us each and every day. And I know your grandparents are extremely proud of you, and we are also. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for your support. You're very welcome. And thank you for joining us today, and we'll be right back.
Well, we, I thank you for coming in. Absolutely. Thank you for allowing me to yeah. come. Talking about the Air Force, I'll tell you how easy it was. Y'all got the cameras off it. <laughs> 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 Compared to what you're going through. It was uh, in uh, uh, Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can get pretty cold in Texas. I mean, you think that, and I was there in January. But the Air Force had some cut-off threshold mm -hmm. on these uh, obstacle courses that you would go through. And I had a lot of water obstacles and things like that. And I don't know if it's below 32 degrees or whatever it was, they would not allow them to put water in the water obstacles. So we ran around the water obstacles, didn't even have to do those things. So I can tell you, it was nothing like I know what, what you guys are going it's, through. It's, it's gotten a lot easier through the time. since I, Even since I've gone through uh, boot camp, it's changed a lot. Like I think, it's, I think it's a little shorter now, or there's something they took out. I don't recall, but it's they made it shorter now. But I have a buddy of mine that's uh, my best friend, actually, mm -hmm. that is stationed at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. And he's back home on leave, too. He's he's out here because he's got to go back and do some more training, I believe. I tell you, I was probably not a very good soldier. I remember I was going through basic training. And I think they did this on purpose. They put all these newspapers right out by the mess hall. And of course, you couldn't stop and read them. They didn't want you to have any involvement with the, with the outside while you were in training. And so you could walk by and, you know, you could try to read one of them as you're coming out. So one day, our TIs, they were all still inside. And I thought, hey, I'll catch up on the news here while they're, while they're not there. And I'm out there, I'm reading the headlines out of these little boxes, you know. All of a sudden, he comes out. I didn't see him. He's right behind me. He hollers, Airman, boy, you <laughs> come to attention. <laughs> What are you doing? Button that button. So I had a button on my back uh, pocket that was uh, unbuttoned, and then he said, get in formation. Airman, come back here. You're a disgrace. What do you see wrong with your uniform? I looked around. I had another button. <laughs> he called me back about four times, and it seemed like every button I had must have been, must have been unbuttoned. So. Finally, I got him all buttoned, and he put me back in formation. That's, that reminds me of a lot of different times that I've had, too. Like, they'll come up, hey, recruit. And then you see sometimes you'd see one guy, he'd be all, his uniform would be all messed up or something. You see, like, see him come out of nowhere and just start yelling and screaming at him. And oh, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. He's going crazy like a chicken with his head cut off. I remember they, uh, they picked us up. You fly to, to Texas, and, uh, you know, uh, a Jeep picked us up. A Jeep was what they called. I don't know if they still do it. Somebody didn't have any stripes on. Uh, so he picked us up. You know, you're just talking to him, you know, going out there and there's eight or ten of us on this bus. And yeah, you know, it's not too bad. Of course, obviously, he's, he's been a real mess up or he'd have had some rank. He had no rank at all and he's still there. And so they put us in the barracks. You know, we all go to sleep and the next morning I'm telling you, we all woke up to the darndest screaming and hollering outside you have ever seen. And they had this one guy standing up against the wall, and there's about three of these TIs that are in his face, and they are screaming. I thought, man, that guy must have killed somebody last night. <laughs> they would never jump on somebody that bad unless he has committed murder or something like that. Well, what happened was they just made an example out of him. They wanted to get us started on the first day and scare the ever-loving heck out of all of us. Well, he did a pretty good job, I, I can tell you. But I'm sure they do it. Every time they bring in a, uh, a different group of rainbows, that's, uh, that's what they do to them on the first day. Grab but, their attention. Oh, yeah, got my attention. Uh, it was also a funny thing when uh, we were getting closer to graduation because we had the, we had the three different phases. We had first, second, and third. And you'll be, you'll, once you get like to your other phase, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm all big and bad now, you know. And then you just, you know, wait mm -hmm. to get to the other phase. And then you see the new guys coming and you're just like, oh, I can't believe. Yeah. I was there not too long ago. Look, just, you're, just, you're, you're picking out little things that are all wrong with him. You're like, oh, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Need to fix your uniform, look at them shoes. Or... Well, you know, they, uh, they washed out a lot of folks uh, when I was in there because, you know, they could, it was during the Vietnam War, and mm -hmm. they could get just as many as they needed, and they wanted to uh, keep the best of the best. And what would happen is these folks would go missing in the middle of the night. 
I mean, you didn't know what happened to them. When they washed you out, they waited till the night, and they came in there and got that person, had them to clean all their stuff out, and they were out of there. And so the rest of us, we didn't know if they were dead. We didn't know what happened to them. They just kept leaving. You know? they wanted, they wanted, but a few left, and we got through. So, uh, but it changed after that. So. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, Mayor. good luck. Thank you. I hope you have a good deployment, a safe deployment. If you ever need anything out of us here at the city, let us know. Well, I appreciate it, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I know you got a lot of pins and plaques, but let me give you something to take with you. I know they won't let you put this on your uniform or anything. But I, I could probably a, squeeze it on there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, lapel pin with the city of Douglasville's logo on it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I know you wonder what that is. It looks like a nuclear tree. Some people call it the Holocaust tree. But uh, Douglasville uh, was an Indian uh, location, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the Indians, as history has it, I don't know if this is true, they skinned that tree as a landmark. And it was a chestnut tree. And it's, actually it was right up here where the old courthouse was for an awful long time. And of course it was torn down to, to build or bulldoze to build a courthouse. So that's how we ended up with our seal. Uh, the nuclear tree. <laughs> oh, that's pretty that's pretty neat. Yeah. Sure. But really it's supposed to signify the fall of the year, harvest time, you know there's it's showing a, a, yeah. a yeah. Uh, field in the background with some houses and everything is what I've been told it would, it would su supposed to signify. All right. Well thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure Appreciate talking it. to you. Absolutely. I'm Mickey Thompson and we're on location today at the uh, Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours and we are here in the uh, City of Douglasville and the Convention Bureau's gift shop and uh, with me today are Pat Smith and Josie Wren. Tell us a little bit about your gift shop. Well we've got, uh, since we opened about a year ago, we have really um, expanded. We have something for everyone we think. Um, we've got our Christmas items out and we have more to put out so we invite everyone to come in and, and visit us. Uh, we have our pumpkin with the city of Douglasville seal on it down there. I think um, the mayor is, has seen that. Um, we have a lot of food items as well. Josie, what do you... Well, we're very proud of our Douglasville throw. Uh, we just got that in last month and it features historical locations here in the city. And he also features in the center of uh, the city seal. And then, of course, we carry as a keepsake our cookbook from the DDA. Great. Well, the uh, gift shop is located in downtown Douglasville, just off the plaza. And you guys are open Monday through seven days a week, right? Seven days a week, yes. We, we are open seven days a week, Saturday 10 to 5 and Sunday 1 to 5. And first and foremost, we are a welcome center, so any visitors that come through town come in here and we tell them all about Douglasville and why it'd be a good place for them to live. Well, thank you for joining us today on uh, uh, our program, and we invite uh, all of those folks who may be watching to stop by the gift shop. They've got some really unique items, especially for Christmas. With Christmas and the holidays coming up, uh, they will be glad to show you the new and unique things we have here in the city of Douglasville's gift shop.